Today we're going to do the story of the air rifle. Uh, when it comes to shooting silhouette and shooting a lot of other things, uh, the air rifle is probably your most important training tool, practicing tool. What? An air rifle? Yeah, air rifle. Um, now why is the air rifle going to be that important? Well, can you go out every day and shoot your, even something like a 22? Yes, you can. Uh, and if it's a Rimfire 22, it's really not that expensive. Um, where I live, I can walk right out into the pasture and shoot whatever I want anytime I want. Uh, no neighbors, big, huge, open field. I can shoot 300 yards in my yard if I want. Um, where I lived two years ago, I can't do that. I would have to drive an hour to the gun range, uh, an hour each way. Uh, hope I had a clear lane to shoot in. Uh, hope the weather was good. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of things to do. An air rifle or an air pistol if you're, if you're shooting IDPA or Steel Challenge or something like that. Uh, super training tool because it gives you that uh, trigger time, it gives you that time to learn if it's pistol to learn the muscle memory, you know if it's rifle, uh, time to get that muscle memory, getting your uh, rifle up into position, finding the target so it all comes natural. So on match day, it's not a big thing where you're shuffling around trying to find that target. It's just automatic. Um, and there's an evolution to what I've done in air rifle because when I started shooting silhouette, uh, I shot silhouette with the equipment I had on hand. Uh, I used a 1022 and a three to nine uh, inexpensive scope. And it worked just fine. I shot some great scores with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there are plenty of times when I think maybe I should just go back and do that some more because it's fun. You know, I switched to a, again, not very expensive combination, rifle and scope, and bolt action, just bolt action to slow myself down, bolt action because I'm not having that uh, action of the, the semi-automatic swinging back and forth, you know, maybe I'll get higher scores. I don't really get that higher scores. My scores are still pretty consistently shitty. <laughs> uh, some days I have, I have better days than others. Um, but with the air rifle, um, this is the evolution and the philosophy of using the air rifle for training, practice purposes. Um, when I didn't have any money, you know, I had $89 uh, to go to the Mega Mart and get myself an inexpensive uh, break barrel um, department store type air rifle that still shoots fairly well. Uh, now this is a Springer, so there's a lot of uh, disadvantages to that. Yes, it has a faster pellet, uh, but it also has a big spring reciprocating action. Uh, but you, if you learn to shoot this fairly accurate, accurately, you're going to, in order to do it, you're going to have to be really steady. You're going to have to really hold your stance after the shot, have really good follow through. Um, and it gets you that Muscle memory of picking up the rifle every single time, firing the shot, right? Put the shot in, pick the rifle up every single time, firing the shot. And something like that, I'm probably shooting at targets that are much larger uh, from a, a, an MOA standpoint, much larger than what I would be trying to shoot for literal air rifle uh, silhouette practice because it's just not as accurate as a real silhouette air rifle would be. Um, it just isn't. That's just the fact, Jack. That's the way it is. It's an $89 practice rifle. Now, I get a rifle with a hunter-style stock uh, with a scope mounted to it. You know, I don't go for any of the, the fancy Space Age uh, air gun looking cartoon guns because that's not what we shoot silhouette with. 
I get something similar. So it's similar in form and format. So we're building up that muscle memory of lifting that rifle every single time, getting our cheek down there and getting our target in the scope. It's just part of that repetition. Now you also get the feedback of firing a pellet at a target. Great feedback. It really does teach you uh, trigger pull, breath control, all the basic things that you have to put together, all those little steps that you have to put together, those bricks in the wall, to make a decent silhouette shooter. Now there's an evolution involved uh, with my philosophy here because now that I am making some good money where I work, which is nice, I took it that one next step and bought still certainly not the most expensive target rifle out there. This is just, you'll recognize this as uh, an Avante 753. Um, I went with the synthetic stock. My silhouette rifle has a synthetic stock. Um, I want a similar form and function to what I would be using as a, in a rimfire silhouette match. Uh, now one thing I do want to do is add air rifle silhouette to the matches that I run. So there's a lot of different reasons, but one of the reasons is I will get to shoot another rifle, another competition rifle. Uh, this is typically a 10 meter competition rifle, so shooting silhouette targets at 45 yards. Uh, I have done it on paper, and this is uh, the feet per second on this is pretty slow. It's like uh, less than 500 feet per second. So you pull that trigger and you hear that pop, that funk. Uh, you can practically check your emails when you're waiting for the, the, the pellet to hit the target. And then you watch it through the scope and it's like, okay, there it is, you know? Uh, it's pretty fun. This is, something like this is really going to teach you to stay uh, calm and in control because it doesn't move fast, that pellet. Uh, so you really have to stay in that target zone, in that target, reduce that wobble and get a really good follow through, you're going to have to really get at it. I was shocked at two things, two things with this, I was shocked how accurate it shoots, you know, if I'm shooting off a table and just shooting into targets and it's ripping one hole with, um, you know, department store pellets, that's pretty good. Uh, the other thing that I was shocked at was just how freaking difficult it is to shoot an air rifle sized target, the correct size targets stenciled onto a piece of paper, uh, it is hard. It is no joke. Now you'll notice in the evolution of the air rifle as a trainer, this has a very inexpensive scope, just a four power scope, because this big springer over here on the table, the big springer just it wrecks scopes. And I mean, I done all sorts of work to that gun as far as the spring, uh, filling it with a good kind of grease. I bought a trigger that cost uh, close to the amount of the rifle because it came with a plastic trigger. I didn't like it, so I bought a replacement trigger for it. it made a huge difference. Um, but it's a big expense when you're only talking about an $89 rifle. Uh, this one here, uh, cost damn close to what that one there cost, and it's an air rifle, so you, you, you know you gotta work within a budget. But you'll notice I'm using the exact same scope on my now practice and competition air rifle as I have on my regular uh, rimfire silhouette competition rifle. Now I'm doing that for two main reasons. One. I'm used to the controls, I'm going to be going to those same controls every time, just like I'm doing the same controls here. And when I practice with the air rifle, <coughs> I'm practicing with the air rifle, I will set up and I will shoot 10 chickens, and I will shoot 10 pigs, and I will go right down the line on the clock with a timer on my phone, just like it's a competition. And I think that's a real important thing to do as well. To have your practice session, not every day, 
but some days, maybe once a week even, have that practice session identically mimic the conditions that you're going to find on match day. Now you can get out and you can use that air rifle every single afternoon if you want to uh, for pennies um, in most situations where people live. Uh, you know, have a good pellet trap, a good backstop behind that pellet trap. Um, you know, because everybody misses once in a while and sometimes pellets aren't perfect. So it's good to have that you know, extra backstop behind the pellet trap if you can, and you should, not even whether or not you can, do it. Wear the eye protection. You don't really need ear protection with those because they're not loud. Um, although you can, you know, uh, just like uh, mimicking match positions, conditions, uh, it's not always a bad idea to put the earplugs in even when you train with the air rifle because that is how a match is. Sometimes, depending on the earplugs you put in, you can hear your breathing really loud sometimes, or the outside atmospheric noise. Uh, you can get wind noise depending on your earplugs. It's not a bad idea at all to practice, uh, even with the air rifle, with the ear protection in, uh, because you're mimicking the match conditions. Now, another reason that I'm using the same scope on my practice and now air competition rifle as I have on my rimfire. Uh, if anything goes wrong with part A, I can switch to plan B. And I have it in inventory ready to go, four screws, back on there, I'm back out on the range. Because um, I don't ever want to miss a match. I know you don't ever want to miss a match for a stupid technical thing. Uh, machines are machines, machines break. It's good to have backups. Um, that's one of the reasons, just using it every day and the ability to build up that muscle memory, good stance, good trigger pull, an air rifle is your best training tool.